Last week I ran through the basics of setting up a cutout character, and this week I delve deeper as I rig a more complex character and show different ways to add more flexibility to him. From simple bones to drawing frame by frame to using the plastic tool. So let's get on with more cutout animation. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name's Darren and I make weekly tutorials for open tunes and the occasional animation. If that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe so you don't miss out. Last week I took you through some of the basics of rigging a simple two-piece character, the BB-8 droid from Star Wars, and animated it using a combination of cutout puppet animation and frame by frame animation, just to show the basic principles of cutout. You can see a link to that above, and it might be worth taking a look to catch up with the basics before continuing with this one. But this week I want to share more tips using a more complex cutout character to show him assembled and animated, so I've drawn this skeleton. And here you can see how it's connected together with the hip at the root, then the body connected to that, and then hanging off there we've got the skull of course, and then the jaw hanging off the skull, then also hanging off the body we've got the arm separated into two pieces, and the hand at the end. And at the bottom hanging off the hip we've got both legs again split into two pieces and the feet. And all this is linked to a single peg which is used for movement but we'll take a look at that in a second and that's connected to the table. And I've made a simple animation with him just to show him moving. And this was put together simply using the animate and skeleton tool for the movement and rotation of each part. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the three options for building your character within a cutout framework. And the first is what you've already seen that I went over last week, to add each part that can move on its own layer, connect them using the schematic, setting their centre points and then using either the animation tool or skeleton tool to move, rotate and resize each part. And this allows some basic movement but it can give a stilted look as each part can only move in two dimensions, so it really stands out as being cut out. So to simply build up the animation, I just move to the right frame. I chose either Animate or Skeleton Tool. In the Skeleton Tool, I chose the Animate option. And then with the right column selected, I can just click and drag on the screen to rotate that body part. And then to rotate it in a different direction, I just move to the next frame and then rotate it again. And if you want the body part to hold the same position, you simply move to the frame where you want to hold the position to and click the key button. And if you take a look at this in the Function Editor, so if I show the scroll rotation, you'll see from frames 1 to 9, the scroll moves from left to right, then from 9 to 19, it goes back to the left, and then it stays the same for the final four frames. And you just work through your animation piece by piece, adding in any rotation, scale, and position changes. And you can also use the inverse kinematic option on the skeleton tool, just here. But that can be really tricky to use. So you can see the skeleton on the screen, and basically for each frame, you select a point that you don't want to move by clicking on it, and that turns the circle to a blue box, and then you click and drag on screen, and then part of the skeleton moves around that point. But it's really tricky to select exactly which part of the skeleton that you want to move. So on the X sheet next to the frame numbers, you can see a blue square with a number in it, and this denotes which part of the skeleton you've made the central point, and then you rotate the skeleton around that, and you can only have one point set for each frame number, but pressing shift allows you to select multiple points to use as the base points to rotate around. But it really doesn't work as I'd expect it to work, so I find it so tricky to use, so I tend not to use it. And you can see me clicking around a few points on the skeleton here. But the idea behind IK is that you can click and drag on one point, and the connecting points move along with it. So in theory you could select the shoulder joint, and then drag the wrist, and the two parts of the arm and the hand would all move together. But I found this really works for me. And the second option is to animate frame by frame. And I'm showing two different animations here. So if I remove the three piece arm, I show my frame by frame column. So first I've just combined the arm part into a single drawing, which you can use to just simplify the number of layers or to animate a very specific number of movements that you can reuse for limited animation, like story time style animations. And I've just shown the arm bending for this example. And of course you can still rotate this drawing if you want to, by using the standard animation techniques. 
So if I go to Animate Tool, change this to Center at the shoulder blade. And remember, you can only set the center once for each layer. And then if I go to Rotation between Frame 1 and Frame 11 here, I can rotate the arm up. So if I run through the animation, the arm starts off down and then rotates up as the animation plays. And secondly, you can use frame by frame drawing to draw something visually that you can't simulate with fully boned rigs. To add an extra dimension to your characters, like showing the arms pointing towards the screen, or to break a model to make a clearer animation. Or you can add smear frames to the movement, or add morphing to the character, and your imagination is your limit. In this example, I've chosen to show an arm changing to a hammer. And I use the auto in between feature of OpenTunes to do this along with some manual editing of the frames, as the auto tweener didn't quite work as I'd hoped. And doing these two things can help to make a smooth animation, but you still have some benefits of puppet animation, by having your tween drawings attached to the model and available for rotating and scaling. So again, instead of just the hand changing to a hammer, we could add a key here, and then on the final drawing, we can rotate it, We can rotate it up here. So the hand changes, rotates at the same time to a hammer, holds for a few frames, and then perhaps it can rotate down much quicker during the final change. So let's take a look at that. And the third option is to use the plastic tool in combination with one of the above to add more flexibility. And I'll go into this in more detail in a separate video in a couple of weeks, but you can see how I've used it here to show a bone muscling up as it bends. And it doesn't look amazing in this example, but you can use it to make objects bend and resize without having to redraw them. And I did that by selecting the arm column, going to the plastic tool, choosing the create mesh option, setting the mesh size, hitting apply, then choosing Build Skeleton, and if I show the mesh, you can see the skeleton here if I zoom in. Then build the skeleton inside each layer. And then finally, go to the Animate option and then move each bone. And in this instance, I untick the Keep Distance option so I could stretch each bone. But this meant being more careful as you adjusted each bone to adjust each triangle within the mesh. And then to view the character clearer, you can hide the mesh from the screen. And of course, in the schematic, you make sure the mesh is in between the layer of the drawing and its parent. And which of these three options you choose depends on what you're trying to animate and how much of the character you need to show. So that's animating a fully boned character only, animating frame by frame, and animating with a plastic tool. So that's a few more tips for building your cutout character. Next week I'll be looking at how you can move your character flexibly using pegs and then using columns instead of pegs to more easily see the key positions. So why not hit that subscribe button to not miss it. And comment below if you have any questions regarding cutout or any other feature of OpenTunes and I'll try to answer them. So I'll see you next week when I look at adding movement with pegs. And that's a guarantee.